Well, hello, everybody, and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, and welcome to Biblical Financial Freedom. Hallelujah. Well, glory be to God. I'm Pastor Raynard Sands. I'm the pastor of Be Like Jesus Ministry here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest of the United States of America, and I thank you for wherever you joining us from, and if, if you can, just in the, in the uh, remark bar, just let us know where you're watching from. Please, if you have time, just take time to do that. And then I need one other favor. I need you to hit the like button, the share button, and subscribe. You say, why is that, Pastor? Now, look, I know there's some. Even if it's only five of you to watch this, if you would share it, man, you have people on your social media platform and other people that we can reach. Now, I know people need to know about finances. We heard that over 90% of Americans are paying their bills on their credit cards. So I know that you can pretend like I don't know, but I know that the majority of people, maybe not you, but some of your friends, need help when it comes to finances. That's why I believe God. God had me teach this years ago before the uh, inflation and stuff happened. He had us start teaching this. Why? Because God knew what was coming. People need to know what the word has to say when it comes to your finances. And what better way to learn it than from the word of God? The word of God will set you free in every area of your life. Now, I can't teach you on other subject because I don't really know them. I know them a little bit, but God has blessed me in this subject. Three things I stick with. Teach on faith, teach on healing, and I teach on finances. That's the arena God has anointed me in. That's the arena I stick with. Now, if you ask me to teach you on last days, end time, that's not my arena. If you ask me to teach on praise and worship, I know enough to teach you the base, but that's not my arena. There are some people, man, they are gifted and anointed to teach in that area, but that's not me. All right, so just let you know. So if you come in, when you come to class for this, we teach on finances because this is what God blessed us and anointed us to be able to teach you, okay? So we're going to pray. We're going to make our daily confession. And today we're going to start a new teaching on blessed is God's best. Okay, we're starting a new teaching today. Blessed is God's best. Let's pray, make our daily confession, and let's get into the word. So Father, right now in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to share the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, that you will give us ears to hear. Help us not to be just hearers of the word of God, but doers of the word of God. Then I thank you, Father, for the wonderful, powerful Holy Spirit, who is our teacher, who is our God. And Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you, trusting in you to help me to teach this word with simplicity and accuracy, to help meet the needs of people. I thank you, Father, as people hear the word, what your word says about finances. Father, they're going to receive that word and faith will come. And I thank you, Father, the Spirit of God is going to help me to teach it in such a way so that theirs needs to be met and to help them to apply the word, receive the word, apply to their lives and see the results that the word of God promised. And then I thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that comes us against us in judgment shall be condemned, for this is the inheritance of the children of God. I thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' name. We bind every outer word, every corrupt communi communication, and every false accusation, for we declare and we decree in Jesus' name that not one of those things should come to pass. We bind every plot, every plan, every strategy, every maneuver that the devil would try to bring against us to hinder the word of God and hinder the promises of God from coming to pass in our lives. For we declare, we decree in Jesus' name, not one of those things should be manifested and not one of those things should come to pass in our lives. But we stand in agreement that all the promises of God are yes and amen. And everything that he has started in us, he will complete in us until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we alone give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' name.
amen and amen. Well, come on, get your Bibles, wave them in the air like you really care, and let's make this confession again, okay? Are you guys ready? Here we go. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Okay, like I said, we're going to start a new teaching. Listen to it again. Blessed is God's best. Come on, say that with me. Blessed is God's best. Come on, one more time. Blessed is God's best best. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go to our foundation scripture in this teaching. It will be in Psalm 112. Psalm 112 verses 1 through 3. Now, I'm going to read this in the King James. All right. Hallelujah. Ooh, glory be to God. It says, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endures forever. Glory be to God. Now in the, in the, in the King James, I mean in, in the Amplified Classic, it says this. Prosperity and welfare are in his house. Hallelujah. Okay. And I, I want to say this verse. It's all in my notes. God's best for our lives is for us to be blessed. Whenever you see that word blessed, okay, man, see, it's like you and I, are blessed by the Lord. When it says blessed, that's the covenant. That's a promise that God made with you and I. Blessed. Remember, he said the blessing of the Lord. When God says blessed, that's like a uh, that's like a commandment. That's a covenant that God puts on you and I. It says, praise you the Lord. Blessed. You know what it is to be blessed? Blessed is like the favor of God, the goodness of God. Man, when you are blessed, can't nobody stop it. That's something God bestows on you and I. I mean, when you heard that word blessed, 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 blessed is the man, blessed is you, blessed. Man, that's something God puts on you and I and nobody can take it away. See, when God commands it and when he does it, well, what you gonna do about it? It ain't nothing you earn, nothing I earn. It's something that has been put stored upon us. See, that's the grace. Something, not something we deserve. It's something God puts on us. And this says, praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. You already blessed when you fear the Lord. Now, what is blessing to you? Think about it. So that's why I'm saying blessed is God's best. Why? Because when God does it, who can stop it? He's God. Now, why, what, why is this important when it comes to your finances? Because when God bless it, can't nobody stop it. God's best for our lives is for us to be blessed. See, God wanted his people to be blessed. I'm not just talking about money, but that's the finances are earlier. Everybody go to the job to work with. But when God put his blessing on it, that's why man can't understand. When you say 90% with the blessing of God is more than 100% without it. See, 90% with the blessing of God is more than 100% without it. That's why we give our tithes and offers unto the Lord. Why? 
We want his blessing. I know some of you, I can already hear it. Well, I don't believe in tithing and that is under the law. Man, we are the seed of Abraham. Tithing came 400 years before the law. I tell people, choose to do what you want. You choose. See, believe in this Bible is a choice. I choose to believe God. I choose to live my life or in the example the same way Father Abraham did. If Abraham did it, it was good enough for him, it's good enough for me. I, I, I'm not looking, oh, it's in the law, it's not in the law. No, I'm just following the pattern. I can't find one scripture where God said, you don't have to tithe no more. I know people say this is under the law, doesn't it? But I can't find one scripture where God did. See, I, I'm, I'm simple. I'm not, I guess I'm not well educated like some of you. Just find me the scripture where God said you don't have to tithe no more. When I find that, I stop tithing, but I can't find it. I haven't found it in the Bible. I heard what you said. I heard what other people said, but I haven't seen anything where God said you don't do it no more. Now, you find me that, we'll be okay. But until then, I'm going to keep doing it. And guess what? I'm enjoying the blessing. I'm going to enjoy it. Let me give you an example. Me and my wife at the time, we had three, teen, three very active teenagers in the house at the same time. And they had different things to happen. One of my, do my daughter, well, she was young. She wasn't a teenager then. My son had a hernia, sports hernia, and all of that. Everything covered. Insurance, we had took care of it. Our kids, teenage, they was in sports, gymnastics, uh, taekwondo, run track, swimming, chair, basketball. And never. I look back, man, it was only the mercy of God. Never had no problems with cars. They might have been in accidents, but insurance covered and stuff. Never had one problem. I, I mean, I'm telling you. Me and my wife, we decided to tie. I can't think of one thing we ever, where we had to end up paying for anything, bad accidents, situation, with our kids, me and my wife. I mean, I think about, that was the blessing of God. Now, man, I, I think that's the blessing. He said, he'll pour you our blessings. You know, you bring your tithes and offerings, he'll, he'll, he'll pour you our blessing. There's not room enough to receive. I look back and I think, man, that was God. That was God. Three very active teenagers and God smooth sailing. Never lost a dime, me and my wife. Never lost a dime on anything with our kids. Health, accidents, insurance, nothing. I think back, man, that was God. God covered it all, blessed us all, all the way through. Now, we had some friends, man, not to put them, nobody down, went through some crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. And watch this. Many of us went to church together, but they refused to tithe. Refused to tithe. And different things, people say, oh, I don't know, I wouldn't compare. Oh, well, I just choose, we were blessed. Blessed of the Lord. God protected us, took care of us. Our cars, me and my wife, our cars. I had a, I had a truck I drove for over 16 years. No major problem, no major stuff. My wife's car, never no major stuff, no major repairs and stuff. Man, it's almost like when the God took care of the people in the wilderness, that's like God took care of us. Really, hallelujah. Not just occasionally. Look, see, this just look like this. See, prosperity and welfare in your house, it's not just occasionally, but all the time. And our life just kept getting better. And still just keeps getting better and better and better. What is that? Ain't nothing we do. It's the blessing of the Lord. It's the blessing of the Lord. So I'm talking about blessed is God's best. When you're walking with God, living for God, I'm not saying where you start off, but where you keep going, your life should be getting better. Your finances should be getting better. Your situation when it comes to finances should be getting better. If you got credit card debt and all of that, 
Eventually, you should be able to pay one of them off and another one off. Eventually, to the place where you're debt free. We didn't get there overnight, but following the plan of God, it just keeps getting better. Keep getting better. We able to go on trips, all paid for, things are paid for. Man, we used to be like, oh Lord, we believe in God, Father, we believe in you for enough money to take this vacation. To do it. Man, we don't live like that no more. Now it's like, where you want to go? What you want to do? And we take plenty of. I mean, we we take at least four trips a year. Me and my wife vacation, do things, and have but not not the boats. I couldn't always do that. What? Blessed. Blessed. I'm talking about not just occasionally, but all the time. Favor. Favor. The favor of God. Different things. God, God you help people. God bless you. Do all of that. We don't do it for that, but you get blessed all the time. All kinds of different ways. Favor of God. When God first created man, he blessed him. When God first created man, he blessed him. Okay, let's go to Genesis. Go to Genesis. I'm going to show you. I'm show you in the Bible. Genesis chapter 1. And look at verses uh, 26 through 28. I'm talking about blessed is God's best. See, you have to teach these things to get your thinking to change about finances. Because some of you think it's normal to struggle. Or some of you think it's a badge of honor. You want God to bless you. Just, oh, God just doing this to keep me humble. Nah, man. The devil trying to take you out. The devil want to keep you from enjoying what God provided for you. Until you start, until you change your way of thinking that God wants you to be blessed and he wants you to be prosperous, the devil want to keep you in bondage. Always remember, the devil comes to attack you and I. This is how he attacks you. Don't be, don't, be, don't be ignorant of his device. He comes to attack you and I with a thought, an idea, and a suggestion. That's the only way the devil will attack you. He has to give you a thought. You buy into it, an idea or a suggestion. And he give you that idea, well, God, you know, God, if you have too much, then, then you won't be holy or well, you might sin. See, that's a thought. You take on that idea and that suggestion and the devil will keep you in bondage. You see, it's a, it's a belief. You have to believe that it's God's will for you to be prosperous. You have to believe it that's God's will for you to be debt free. Is that you have to believe that it's God's purpose for you to have more than enough to meet all your needs and to meet the needs of others. It won't see, until your thinking change, your life won't change. Because if the way a man thinketh, so, so is he. As a man thinketh, so if he. If you think it's God's will for you to always barely make it or, to, or not to have everything, that's how you're going to live. That's how you're going to live. Your life will never go above your thought or your word of confession. Never will. If you think like that, you'll live like that. Your life will direct you in the way you think and the way you speak. It's the law. It's a spiritual law. Okay? So look, look, look at look at look at Genesis chapter one in the King James. And look at verses 26 through 28. Okay, you guys ready? It says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. him. Male and female created they them. And God blessed them. Okay, I just want to pause there for a minute. What did God do? And God blessed them. And God said unto them. Let's do what God said to them. Be fruitful. And multiply. And replenish the earth. See that word multiply right there is prosperity. Multiply is not lack. He said, be fruitful. To be fruitful is prosperity. I don't know why people fight against prosperity. I don't know why Christian people talk against it. All through this Bible, you'll see where God always blessed his people. He always prospered his people. 
But yet there's some idiots out there, even Christian preachers that preach against prosperity, talk down and bad about prosperity. But all through the Bible, from the beginning, God, it was his will to bless his people. What you think blessing is? I want to say knucklehead or fool. What you think blessing is? That's prosperity. We ain't say, see, why do y'all get upset when we say God prosper person? I grew up poor. I grew up poor. Did you hear, listen to me. It's no different than a person having cancer or some type of terminal illness. Now, if I tell you I grew up and had cancer and God healed me, everybody would be happy. Woo, praise the Lord. But when I tell you I was poor, and now God then blessed me and made me rich, now you got a problem. Both of them bondage. Poverty is bondage. See, people who preach against prosperity and preach that it's against God's will to bless people and prosper them, you must have been rich all your life. You, I mean, really, I, I think about that. I think for you to tell me, you come and you would have told me, oh, I'm sorry, nothing God wants. You're supposed to be poor the rest of your life. God wants to keep you humble. Man, I probably would have knocked you out. Probably would have ran you out of my neighborhood. Come telling us. What are you going to tell poor people? It's God's will for them to be poor. And let me just tell you the truth. Let me help some of you out. That's why a lot of poor people don't like to hear you Christian folks. Now, let me just talk real, real to you. To, I grew up around mostly all black folks. That's why us black folks call it white people gospel. Jesus, white people. Because a lot of you white, ignorant preachers who tell us that it's God's will for us to be poor, we ain't want nothing to do with your white Jesus. Why? Because you made it sound like it was God's will for us to live like that. And then you're going to come with us with some poor gospel. We poor, starving, parents can't pay their bills, needs being met, and you're going to tell us how it's God's will, but you living good. Your wife, your needs are being met. You got nice houses. We don't have them. But you're going to tell us that's what God wanted for us. And you know what we said? We don't want nothing to do with your white Jesus. Don't get offended. I'm just telling you the truth. Until we heard somebody with some courage and was bold enough to tell us the truth and said, hey, poor boy, you ain't got to be poor no more. And then we said, hey, talk to me. That me her. I didn't heard this religious Jesus, mad at Jesus, didn't want nothing to do with this white Jesus. Now, I'm not saying he's white, but that's what we thought. Because we heard you so-called white folks coming in our neighborhood talking about how it was God's will for us to be poor. So we didn't want nothing to do with Jesus. We already were suffering. So why do we got to serve God who wanted to keep us suffering? And you say, oh, so we can be happy on the inside. Please, you must ain't never live with somebody who was hungry, crying themselves to sleep because you hungry and didn't have nothing. And you wonder why we didn't want to serve God? Please, I didn't have to serve God for that. I already knew what it was to go without. But when somebody has some courage and begin to tell us that God wanted us to be blessed and God wanted us to be prosperous. Criticize us all, us all you want. Please, we ain't poor no more. Call me what you want and I'm going to tell every person I got the chance to tell them God's will, God bless is God's best. God wants you to be blessed. God wants your needs to be met. God wants you to have more than enough. God wants you to be able to feed your children. God wants you to be able to bless your children, be able to buy your children the things they want. God wants you to be able to go on trips, buy a house you want, the car. Man, I'm going to preach it until all the days of my life until I die. Why? Because he was anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. But listen to some of you clowns who wants anything to do with Jesus. 
Tell a poor man that it's God's will for him to be poor. Don't nobody want to hear that. Give me some hope. Give me something to live forward to. Get mad as you want. Don't nobody want to hear that stuff. Now, the people you criticize, psh, man, I love. The Kenneth Copeland, the Fred Prices, the Jerry Savelle, Jesse the Pl Praise the Lord. Come and talk to me anytime you want. But to listen to you, other guys act like you compassionate for us, you care about us, but you telling us God wants us to be poor. Man, you must have never been poor. So that's why I tell people, man, it's God's will for you to be blessed. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to have more than enough. Jesus came that you might have life and have more abundantly. Man, one of the most freeing things in my life was when I finally could bless my children and take them shopping and buy them what they wanted without, no, we can't get that. Be, be careful what you pick. Man, that ain't no way for no father to live. Please, take your kids out and other people, you, they watching, watching sinners, ungodly people get nice stuff with the man that's serving God. No, nah, honey, you can't, don't, you can't have that. God wants us to be humble. Please, man. Please give me a break. I, I, I was so happy today. I could tell my kids, go ahead, get whatever you want. We bought while well, we got it. Dad, can I get that? Yes, you can. Dad, can I buy them shoes? Yes, you can. It was a day when I said, no, we can't get that. Oh, hey, we can't afford. But when God set me free, whoo, man, you don't know what kind of joy it was to finally go get your kids some shoes they really want and some clothes where they can finally feel like, wow, man, well, Dad, we can afford that. Yes, we can. And then we're going to listen to you other clowns that tell us it's God's will for us to be poor. Man, you must ain't never had no kids that ain't had nothing. But thank God. Whew. God wanted us to be blessed. Well, look, I'm out of time. You can tell, man, this is going to be good. I ain't mean, look, don't get offended. I'm just telling you my story. So you people who believe it's God's will for you to pour and not to be blessed, you keep believing that lie. I love it. Glory be to God. And I don't care what you think about it. I was poor. Now I'm rich. Rich is better. All right, look, I love you. I'm out of time. Remember this, though. That God is exalted. Satan is defeated. And Jesus is Lord. P-O-H. Peace out, homies and homies. We see you the next time. God bless you for now.